I'm not gonna lie, the last four weeks have been rough for everyone, including myself. When you scroll through your Instagram these days, it seems that everyone's doing great, enjoying life, being productive. But this life right now, lockdown at home, this is nothing normal. And it's time influencers start sharing how they're really feeling because acknowledging the situation is necessary to be able to cope with it and then move forward. Personally, I found it helpful to see how other people were coping with all this. So I want to share my journey with you in case that can be helpful for you as well. So here's my journal of one month in strict self-isolation. Week one. I remember thinking everything is okay. I work quite a lot from home anyway, so I can adapt my schedule. Internet works fine, thanks to the 21st century. So I can pretty much keep working normally and I can stay at home. So that's what I'm gonna do. Newton wrote the law of universal gravitation while self-isolating from the great plague of 1665 in England. So I'm gonna do the same, use the time to reflect, focus on creating, do great things, get ahead on my 2020 goals. I finally have an excuse to order gym tools. I never really enjoyed exercising at home alone, but hey, this is an opportunity to change my mind. Energy level, normal. Doing okay? Fine. Remembering how it felt to do a plank or squats. <laughs> I researched the corona topic intensively to see what other countries were doing, what measures were likely to be implemented in the future, what the safety and hygiene measures that were recommended were. I prefer to know, even if it's bad news, than not knowing what's happening. But then towards the end of the first week, a minor thing happened, like a, a detail, really. I was just starting a workout with a YouTube tutorial in my living room and internet broke down. And the connection did not come back for an entire hour. And at this point, I freaked out. Week two, throughout the week, I had completely lost my mojo. I wasn't getting out of my loungewear anymore. I was wearing pajamas all day, basically. I wasn't wearing makeup. I wasn't wearing my rings. I was feeling way too comfortable, lazy, unmotivated, blop. When telling the date, I was off by two days. It took me a while, but it did hit me eventually <laughs> when the government said we're gonna be at home for two weeks and then maybe another two. Never, ever, ever. We're already way past the point where we could contain that thing, like the curve is going up. <laughs> It's gonna peak somewhere there because there are people who walk around without symptoms so they don't even know they have it. They're contaminating everyone. There are people who decided that they don't care. They also exist. And then apparently there are not enough tests for everyone to be tested. So the numbers are completely underestimated. I have to say the idea of spending not two weeks but two months <laughs> at home is not super good for the mood but I guess we're all gonna have to get used to it that's one thing and then there was also the other psychological effect when I started to see a growing and pretty heavy impact on my own business and finances as well as friends and family members losing their jobs basically freelancers getting kicked out of projects they had been recently booked for employees being sent home period entrepreneurs having to close shops around me, like people I know personally. I observed myself getting angry at people I had never met in my entire life <laughs> for not sticking to the rules. For instance, moms meeting together outside for their children to play together. So the moms would keep a distance of two meters between each other, but then the kids would be mingling and hugging each other. Or I saw people rushing to the supermarkets trying to stockpile toilet paper, milk, boxes, flour. The thing is, in Germany and in France, productions are running absolutely normally. So there is no shortage. There is no shortage apart from the one that we self create. If people kept shopping normally, we wouldn't be missing anything in supermarkets. In a Facebook group of French people living in Berlin, I saw a French asking, why on earth are the Germans all buying hamsters like crazy? And why do they think that could help against the virus? <laughs> He had heard the word Hamsterkauf, which in German literally means buying hamsters, but it actually means panic shopping. 
energy level in week two, <laughs> lowest. I felt swollen, <sighs> slow, <sighs> stupid. <sighs> I couldn't focus. <sighs> At the end of that week, I looked up whether there was a secret island somewhere in the world that I could move to until 2022. Week three. I can't exactly say what triggered it, but there was a sudden moment when I remembered something that I already knew somewhere in the back of my mind, which is circle of influence, circle of concern. The small one is inside the big one. We are worried, stressed, overwhelmed by a lot of things that don't belong to the inner circle of what we actually have control over. So stop focusing or feeling guilty or miserable because of everything you have no control over. Focus on what you can actually influence. Conclusion, <laughs> scratch my first two weeks entirely and start over with a new routine. Get rid of everything that bothers me. Tidy up, clean. Get up at the same time every day. Get dressed in the morning or at least make an effort. I'm working on an upcoming video on how to add some chic to a casual outfit. I found that useful, I hope you'll do too. I didn't manage to remove my gel nails, but at least I could trim them and fix the broken ones with super glue for now. Who knew that having gel nails could become an issue one day? Add shelves in my kitchen so I can display my teas nicely and be happy every time I pick one, which is 10 times a day. New world order, at least in this fridge. <laughs> Instead of sorting it by categories, I have at the bottom the things that can be kept for longer. In the middle, the nearest best before dates. And at the top is what is already opened and needs to be eaten soon. Add healthy supplements and vitamins to my food routine. Since this thing looks more like a marathon than a sprint, I want all my parameters to be brought up to 100%. increase sports, decide on a fixed routine and then stick to it so that you don't have to think about it. Control how much I eat versus how much I exercise, track my steps, track my exercise. Energy level, rising again. Now able to get a plank kind of right, getting used to the workouts, building up strength and endorphins. Notice that all these little changes and details had nothing to do with actual work. It had to do with my well-being and my environment at home. Yet as a side effect, my work was now also getting done much better and faster. I came out of that week three thinking I can do this and I will. Week four. In week four, I kept improving and fine-tuning my new routine, but it didn't change that much anymore. My main achievement in week four was to make a plan because what bothered me most about this whole situation since it started was that I didn't know when it would end. And that's not good for this period, at least in my case. I was missing a perspective. So I made up my own plan and timeline. Energy level, high, even higher than in the first week. I needed something to look forward to. So for me, since I'm self-employed, Preparing for the after Corona means working both on my skills and on my business plan. I did that exercise of the three circles, which I hadn't done in years. What are you good at? What does the world want slash need? What do you love? Then the sweet spot is where the three circles overlap and this is what you should strategically spend your energy on. I did that on the Sunday afternoon of the end of week three and it instantly broadened my horizon. It was so good to know that I had options and so do you you have options if you're a freelancer and you currently do not have a project booked it's a chance to improve your portfolio build or improve your website this way when the economy starts again you'll get a head start if you have lost your job where would you apply for a new job and which skills can you learn right now to help your application later on if you have free time why not develop a side hustle that could bring money now or down the line it might even be a hobby that you've had for years that you just haven't put out there yet. <laughs> it always makes sense, not just now, always, to not be dependent on one source of income. So diversifying your revenue is essential. If you have free time, why not develop a side hustle that could bring money now or down the line? 
it might even be a hobby that you've had for years that you just haven't put out there yet. <laughs> it always makes sense, not just now, always, to not be dependent on one source of income. So diversifying your revenue is essential. Whatever you do to prepare for the future, for the after crisis, it's your call, but it is within your circle of influence. You have control over it. We do have to wait until that crisis is over, but it doesn't mean that we have to be passive during that time. Speaking of existing businesses and new businesses, I'd like to introduce you to Shopify's initiative to support the online economy through this crisis. Shopify is the platform with which I've built my web shop and I'm very pro Shopify because I think it's the best platform out there. They're currently offering a 90 day free trial. It is the longest trial period they've ever offered. Let me give you a couple of examples on how you can use it. If you are a cafe, a restaurant or a shop owner, any kind of shop, you have to stay closed right now and you don't have a website. Go to Shopify, get one of their ready-made templates. Some are free, some aren't. Pick the one you want. Build your website, activate gift cards, and then go put a sign on your shop window saying we have to stay closed right now because <laughs> we have to. But you can support us by buying gift cards until we can open again. In Berlin, I see so many shops that are closed, including some where I'm a regular customer. They're not getting any cash flow right now. They could if they gave me a way of supporting them. I'll give you another example. If you sell something that can be dropped off, like books, food, furniture, you can also use the local delivery feature. Customers from your area, when they place an order on your website, can choose the option local delivery, and then you bring the order in front of their homes. If your customers are not coming to you right now, you can still go to them. If you want to take advantage of this Shopify offer, to support your existing business or to start a new one, I will put a special link down below in the description. It will take you straight to that free trial of 90 days with resources and tutorials to help you build your website. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. It's as close as I get to vlogging. I have the highest respect for people who vlog their lives and film everything by themselves. You have no idea how many takes I had to do for this video alone in my house. <laughs> I hope that this video showed you that what people share online versus what they go through in private is not necessarily the same. In fact, it is rarely the same. If you have a business with a website and you'd like to share it with potential customers among fellow viewers, feel free to share that in the comments below. Self-promotion is totally fine and we all should do more of it. If you'd like to hear about 23 things that I learned about running an online business since I started mine, I will link that video here in the corner and down below in the description in case you're interested. I will see you soon in a new video and until then, take care. Bye.